If we have a flow with a parabolic profile like this in a pipe, a round pipe, we'd like to know the interrelationship between the maximum velocity, the average velocity v, the pressure drop, because there's going to be a higher pressure here than a lower pressure here, and that needs to balance out the shear stress acting in the opposite direction. So if we want to find out the interrelationship between all of those things, probably best to start by looking at a control volume. So let's assume that this chunk of our, our pipe is L in length. So the things that we'd be interested in are the head loss due to friction that goes into the Bernoulli's equation, and we know that it's somehow related to delta P. The head loss due to friction, if nothing else is going on in this pipe, it's horizontal, there's no change in velocity, so delta P is related to our head loss due to friction directly. And in fact, it's just a matter of the constant rho G to change from pressure units into head units. Now that pressure drop has to balance out from a force balance with the shear stress applied so that the pressure force acting in the positive x direction that'll be delta P times the cross-sectional area of the pipe that'll be pi d squared over 4. So that's the difference between the pressure force acting on this area and the pressure force acting on this area, which is smaller, must be equal to, because there are no other forces acting, whatever the wall shear stress is that's acting over the entire surface, the exterior wall surface of the pipe. So that'll be tau wall times pi times d, that's the distance around, times L, the length of the control volume, gives us the area that that wall shear stress acts over. So we can cancel out the pi and the D, and we wind up with delta P equal to 4 tau wall length divided by diameter. That's if tau wall's in the direction that we actually drew it. Now we know that tau wall will be equal to mu di u di r at, whoops, that should be a lowercase r, di u di r, so the velocity gradient here times the viscosity, and we're interested in the place where r is equal to capital R, the outside wall. So that's the distance R. And we also know that the velocity is two times the average velocity times 1 minus R squared over capital R squared from our solution previously for Navier-Stokes for steady, fully developed flow. So if we put those two together, we'll wind up with tau wall, the wall shear stress, equal to, there's going to be two there and two there makes four, times mu, Uh, times V, that V comes from there, so we've got the 2, times there'll be uh, a derivative of 1, that's just 0, and the derivative here is going to be 2R over R squared, and there's a negative sign, and the 2 went into the 4 out here.
all evaluated at r equals r. Or, for mu v over r. And we'll pick up a negative sign. But wait a minute. If we're interested in tau wall in that direction, that's equal to mu di u di r at r equals r. So we're going to wind up with u is equal to this, that's correct, and tau wall will wind up with negative here, negative 4 mu v over r. What that means is it's actually positive acting in this direction or negative in the positive x direction. So putting all of this together, delta hf is equal to delta p over rho g, so 1 over rho g times delta p, but delta p is 4 tau wall times L over d, and tau wall is negative 4 mu v over r, so if we put all of those together, negative 4 L over d, that's that one, times tau wall, again negative 4 mu v over r, or over diameter divided by 2, which is the same as r. That closes that, that closes that. Or, that's equal to 32 times mu over rho g times L times average velocity divided by diameter squared. So all of these things here are constants for a given piece of pipe, except for the velocity. So what this tells us is that if we measure the head loss due to friction, this pressure drop, we should see a linear relationship with velocity. So let's have a look at what we do see. If we measure that head loss due to friction, or that delta P, both of which are related to that wall shear stress, they all depend on each other, as a function of velocity, the average velocity in the pipe. Well, no flow, no head loss. A little bit of flow, a little bit of head loss. Some more flow, some more head loss, and so on. This works really well, and we get more or less a straight line corresponding to our data. Except, suddenly, right about here, we get data points that are up here and up here, and up here, and we suddenly have an increasing head loss much bigger than the values we initially got. Something broke right here. And what happened right here? is at about a Reynolds number of about 2300, we had transition to turbulence. Our turbulent flow is unsteady, it's chaotic, and it doesn't obey our steady, fully developed assumptions that we made in getting this parabolic profile. So we're going to have to find some other way to deal with turbulence.